off rep. Superstars Media. My people, my people, my beer from people now having a day. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you're listening to the sound of my voice. This one at Biafra Superstars Media and I'm holding it down. I say may God bless Biafra and may God bless His Excellency. Oyendo Mazenam the Kano. May God bless, may God bless, may God bless His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic of Minton Exile. His Excellency ESN. Ekba. Simon and Jocko for the job Simon is doing. Simon wanna say we thank you, we appreciate you, we love you. Because we know in your hands Biafra is coming. In your hands Biafra is safe. And in your hands when Biafra comes, the people of Biafra will rejoice. My fellow Biafrans, it is sad to say I told you so. I will be like a soothsayer, like a magician. If you ask me that just last week I told you that the military in Oklahoma, they are there for a reason. They didn't go there for no so-called rubbish, stupid peace talk. They claim to be peacekeepers. They said they, said they went to Ogeli and Oklahoma to make peace. They love the men, they love the people, they, they know them, they went without their guns. Today, I want to tell you that another breaking news is happening. In a community just next to Okwama. The community of Olota, O-L-O-T-A. Your dirty zoo military, they've gone there. More than 200 soldiers on three gunboats they went yesterday to olota community just a sister to okwama a community just less than 30 meters from okwama they went there to cause havoc they were shooting all across the whole communities the chairman of olota was kidnapped i'll call it a kidnap the man they call Matthew Olokba, Biggie Ejekbehu, German Obikute, Kenneth Okorodudu, Atwa, and others were all kidnapped. My fellow Bia friends, do you know that the witnesses that saw this one? We know we keep telling you guys, those in Delta, it is time you smell the coffee. If you think the Biafrans are your problems or your enemies, if you think the Igbos are your problems, then you are making a very big mistake. Those in Delta, in Edo, it is time you smell the coffee. In the other case, Governor Okowa sold land to the Fulani Caliphate. Since then, you've been having killing, you've been having kidnapping in Delta. A whole Delta. Where you have had men, the cabal, they are there now kidnapping people. As we speak today, my fellow beer friends, I am very, very vexed. Because over 200 soldiers, they went to Oluta community. And the chairperson, the chairman of the community was kidnapped. And lots of dignitaries were kidnapped as well. Witnesses that saw what happened, they said the soldiers, they raised some houses down in the community. It means they burnt down houses. That is always their regular trademark. Sorrow, tears, and blood, their regular trademark. As the great fella would say, then bring sorrow, tears, and blood, their regular trademark. Next now, they will say, oh, they went there peacefully. They went without no guns. But they are telling you now what they did in Olota community. I am going somewhere with this. Today, I will expose the whole zoo because I am tired of talking. The days of, of doing this broadcast is coming to an end, my people. Because this madness has to stop. Sometimes the way to deal with the madman is to act like a mad person as well. Madman past madman. 
They went to Olota. They burnt down houses. Lord, have mercy. And they went there. They seized all the whole speedboats. Think about it. Those guys, they are fishermen, fishers of men. They need their boats. They need their canoe to do whatever they are doing. They are farming in a poisonous river. The crude oil has already destroyed their river. And they still need their feed boats to do what they have to do. In doing their fishing from a poisonous river. But as we speak, my people... The Zoom military, they went to Oloka, Olokba community. And they seized all the speedboats in the River Rhine area. They burnt down houses. The chairman was taken. And some other dignitaries were also kidnapped. Gunshots roared throughout the whole day in Olota community. The people, they were confused. They were begging. They called the police. They were ringing 999, asking for help, saying they don't know what is happening. The military, they are everywhere. They are shooting guns. They are burning down houses. We need help. We need support. But none came. Later now, your Zoom military will tell you, oh no, we went there without any weapons. So we only went to make peace. And people like the Zoom media, they will be, saying that they will be telling you to pray for your military. They will tell you to beg God for military. They will say they love their military when they buy their military. But look at what they are doing now. Unprovoked. Just because they assume that some people from Okoma, they are hiding in Olota. Just the assumption. They are not sure. But look at what they have gone to do. The chairman was beaten black and blue to a stage of stupor. Stupor means when they beat somebody, the person becomes unconscious. You, that person will shit and urinate on himself. He won't even know. He was beaten to a stage of stupor or to a state of stupor. The zoo, the media, they try to change that word. They try to use a big word to hide what they did to the chairman of Olota. Stupor means to beat somebody to an unconscious state where they don't feel anything. They are unconscious. They don't know where they are. They are on the floor. They cannot move. They look like a zombie. They look like a dead body. Stupor. S-T-U-P-O-R. The eyewitness in Nolota, they said their chairman was beaten by the military. Until he was in a state of stupor. Before he was dragged. From the floor. And taken away. My fellow beer friends. This is the problem that is happening in Oklahoma. This is why we've been telling the whole world. You media out there. You dirty gutter. God forsaken media. You were blaming the people of Oklahoma. But look at what is happening now to their neighbor. What did the people of Olota do to deserve what happened very hours of yesterday? The early hours of yesterday. What did they do to deserve it? Look at what they did to their chairman, to their elder, to their leader. He was beaten black and blue until he collapsed. He could not move. They still dragged his lifeless body with them. Now you understand what their intention was to do to the community leaders of Oklahoma. From the taste of shit, you can tell the smell of mess or vice versa. From the smell of a mess, you can tell the taste of a shit. No matter how dirty or nasty that sounds. For the fact your zoo military can do that. They went to a neighboring country or a neighboring community less than 50 kilometers from Oklahoma. 
It's all about the oil. They are not going there for no peacekeeping. As we speak now in Okwama, in the land of Biafra, there is a military rule taking place because we are at war. We are at war. We are at war. The whole world needs to know this. The Zoom media, I know you are scared to speak. But I'm telling you this for you to know what is happening. My fellow beer friends, before I play this video that you are seeing, I will take it to the man they call Rufa Yuseni. Because today, I took my time to hear what he was going to say about the attack in Oluta community. You all claim he is the best journalist in that zoo republic. You all hold Rufa Yuseni to a very high esteem. So I took my time to sit back and listen to what this guy would do or say when he was analyzing the news. If you are with me, let us go there. Listen to what Rufa Yuseni said about what happened. He tried his best to an extent, but listen. Right, they put in the middle. I think another that story making the rounds about Okwama. You see, when I was saying it yesterday, like I was a soothsayer, the army has no gravamen to go ahead and say they want to set up a final of inquiry into something that yeah. they were they are the aggrieved party. Listen, you get so you were part of what happened. It was an army on slot in that area. And the next year, they want to set up a final of inquiry for what? Mm. For what? So it is best everybody is telling them now, independent part of the query, let them set it up. The army too should come and answer questions there mm. uh, about what happened in Okwama. Hold on, and first, hold on there. What he's saying in effect is this the zoo military, the zoo military, they set up a panel of inquiry to discuss with both communities what happened in Okwama the zoomility that did the killings the zoomility that they, they were the only one that reported what happened in Okwama suddenly the same zoom military they are setting up a an inquiry a panel to discuss between the two communities think about that how would that be fair when the media they have not been allowed to even come into Okwama to see the havoc the carnage that your zoo dirty gutter military did in that community not even the governor till this day was allowed to visit Okwama as we speak Yet, the military had the audacity to say they want to call both communities to come and sit together. As always, the other community, the Okoloba community, they came because they know they have the interest of the military. But as you all know, in Okoma as we speak, this is the fourth week and counting. They've been hiding in the bushes. This is the fourth we can count in. The 419 of your zoo dirty Islamic military was to find a way to get some people who are naive from Okoma to come out as stakeholders. If you claim you are a stakeholder coming to discuss in a meeting, it means you knew what happened in Okoma and they will arrest you and hold you as a bargaining chip now because nobody from okoma came yesterday in that their so-called charade they call a meeting they then went to olota the next community a community next to okoma where there is also oil wells and everything there oil blocks everywhere they went to that community to cause havoc people were killed people were kidnapped the man they called jaman obiokute was kidnapped by your zoo military 
and his house was burnt to the ground. Men like Kenneth Okoro Dudu Atwa, people like Biggie, Matthew Olokpa, and the rest of them, these are the so called the who is who from that community called Olota. They made sure they arrested all those men and burned down their houses. So the so-called charade meeting they are calling a panel of inquiry to discuss among two parties to become more like a middleman to sort out their differences. That was a charade. What they are after is the oil resource from the land of Okwama and now they've gone to Olota community. When I tell you the caliphate, they rule Nigeria. The Fulani cabal, they rule Nigeria. Some of you idiots don't get it. You still say you love Nigeria. You say God bless Nigeria. You say Nigeria go better. You say you believe in one Nigeria. But right before your eyes, look at what they are doing. The media, they are not allowed to report this. Let us hear Rufa Yuseni. But my anger is these guys they are discussing from a far distance. They are not allowed to the crime scene, to the scene where the thing happened, the place where the events took place. They are not allowed to take even a forensic analysis. They are discussing from a studio. They are discussing from Lagos. I will show you something. I will expose those media from the zoo who are communicating with the foreign media houses i will sh i will uh, just watch calm down and watch i have this thing locked down first of all let us hear of you saying what he's saying listen 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 and we keep talking about uh, this confab report no no hold on uh, Rufai, before you go to the confab report okay yeah they, they've already cast a shadow of doubt over everything when they came out to say that it was a peacekeeping force they didn't go there with any uh, weapons you, what, what, now, what peacekeeping? they are saying okay we've what not found all the weapons that they stole from i mean you know so it's already a, a huge shadow that we are seeing it's not demo it's what, a shadow what, what peacekeeping? There was there was no peacekeeping. Okay. I mean, we all saw, we all saw their arms. There was mm. no peacekeeping. They were overrun, which was a sad reality. And my commiserations to the military officers. Yeah. Hold on there. There was no peacekeeping. We all saw their arms. They were overrun. The meaning of that is this: If someone come to you say, "I have this knife." I go choke your knife and you say, okay, me, I get this gun. I go shoot you gun. It is called approach, approach conflict. In conflict management, they call it approach, approach conflict. When they say so, someone, they show his stubborn like a bull in a chinese workshop you know bulls they are stubborn when they are moving they are digging everything they are you know honing everywhere but when you come into a chinese workshop you are in the wrong place it means even though that bull is stubborn it is raging in the chinese in their workshop they have the best of knives the best of blades and every touch they touch that bull it will slice that bull up to the bone marrow so when you hear about a bull in a Chinese workshop, it means a stubborn guy in a wrong place. A knucklehead in a wrong place. Last week I said, when a man becomes overconfident of himself, then he's wide open for a soccer punch. When a man becomes too overconfident of himself, then he's wide open for a soccer punch. The military, your dirty gutter zoom media, because the cabal told to them, while I tell I go to Okwama, they are disturbing our flow of oil. Go there and level them down. Catch all the chiefs, catch all the leaders, and kill them all. They went there, all gone blazing. They went the first day. They took the first three men, they buy them. They went back with 419 because now they want to catch the leaders. 
They then claim, oh, we are coming for a round table discussion. People of Okuma being peaceful, they say, okay, come to the town hall. Let us discuss. All the stakeholders of Okuma, they made the biggest mistake to go there, including their leaders, but they trusted them, thinking they were coming in peace. And they gave them the cola nuts and everything. But at the end, they zoom military because they only listen to the cabal. Not even the president of Nigeria. Tinubu is not responsible for what is happening in Okoma. What you are seeing is a handiwork of a military dictator. Not Tinubu. He is a small boy. When it comes to the affairs of the oil wells, the oil blocks, and things happening in Niger Delta. I said it. Tinubu is a small boy. He is a small timer. What is happening in Okwama and now in Olota community is what is the handiwork of the Fulani Caliphate. Those that were given the oil blocks. So he just told you they were overrun. We saw their ammunition, but when they went there, they were overrun because they overdo themselves. You went to a town hall meeting, you were welcomed, they gave you some cola nuts, they gave you everything to enjoy as you were enjoying. In your states, you now felt you, 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 you can now ask for all the leaders to be rounded up. And those people, they, they, they beg you, say, ah, sir, please, oh, our leaders, so oh, we cannot give them to you now. We can't give them to you now because you only said you were coming for a discussion now. So this one you're asking for our leaders. Ah, please. Because just last day you came here, three men that you took with you, we saw their dead bodies at the riverside. Please now, we cannot give our men to you, our leaders to you, our elders to you. We are scared, we are worried for their safety. Please, we cannot give them to you. And those criminals, those military junta men, they say, eh, oh yeah, open fire on them. You open fire on the youths. Lots of men fell in that town hall meeting. There was a pandemonium in that town hall meeting. A stampede happened in that town hall meeting. You see that, Okoma? I have first hand information of what happened there. People hurried and ran away. And when men heard what happened, second time, they say, fool me once, shame on me. No, fool me once, the shame is on you. But if I allow you to fool me twice, then the shame is on me. You were there in your high horse. Lots of men fell in that town hall there. Men came. They matched your guns. Men came. They matched your weapons. Gun for gun. Granite for granite. A life for a life. Don't be lying. With that same day where your so-called 16 men fell, you also fell some men from the other side. You also fell some men from the other side. But at the end, you guys were run down. You, you guys were outgunned. But suddenly because, you know, the media don't have access to Okwama, you came and gave your own narrative like a coward that you are. And you said, no, with the military, we didn't go with no guns, so. We know the people, they are cultists, they are oil bunkering. We just go to discuss. We went to a town meeting to discuss, you know. We didn't go with no guns. If we had gone with guns, we would have leveled everywhere. That is your trademark. We know what you are into. When it comes to Biafra land, we know what you always raise down the whole buildings. That is what you have been doing from day, day one. But that day in Okwama, you met your match. You met your match. You see this life. You end special. The only thing that makes you look special is that machine, that iron window your hand and the granite coming out from the iron. 
without that iron you are nothing and if somebody get the same iron when you get then uh -uh, respect to the person that that gets their shot first now if they cannot touch you first you go fall for grand but all iron na all na, na iron all man na man in the war front, what makes you victorious is the level of sophistication of your weapon. That granite, that iron for your hand, how sophisticated is it? My people, make we hear of how you say Let us hear what he said next. It will blow your mind. Respect to, you see, sometimes this guy, I respect him because he keeps it real listen to what this guy said in this discussion listen listen we need to be able to investigate what really happened and that's why you see you keep having conflicting reports here and there they say one they say another one they say three things in all of these the army has said like four different things okay tell you so why you and now they have invaded oh. another community in that same region why boom and now they have evaded they have invaded another community in that region. So respect to Rafa Yosini for being at least up to date of affairs happening. They just said it, and now they have evaded another community in that location. That community is the Olota community that I'm speaking about. Let's take it back a bit. Listen, just li just listen a bit. Listen a bit. Listen. What really happened? And that's why you see you keep having conflicting reports here and there. Listen. They say one, they say another one, they say three things. In all of these, the army has said like four different things. I tell you. So why you and now they have invaded another community in that same region. Why? They say it may not yeah. be connected, but it's still the same modus op operandi. Why is that going on? With due respect, the army should be careful. <laughs> we can't afford to inflame passions at this time. Okay. The Niger Delta region is pretty very volatile. Okay. Hmm. And when you understand oh. that, yeah, and I'm saying that it's pretty very volatile because there's a convergence now among all the nefarious stakeholders. Okay. And also, the state has also empowered some of the nefarious stakeholders okay. in terms of contracts and things like that. So that also shows that we should be more careful. Yeah. Okay, back to the uh, fab. You wanted to talk about it? Hold on there, my sister. Hold, hold on there first. Hold on there. Can you now see what this guy said? The state has given out some more contracts. Because that zoo government, all they know about is oil, oil, oil. All they are dealing about, they are discussing that they used to run their economy is the oil coming from the land of Biafra. So even though they dislike us, they hate us with a passion, they still don't want to let us go because of the fringe benefits they get from the land of Biafra. Despite in Zamfara, they've got one of the finest gold in the world. But they decided to create Boko Haram, Iswap, Fulani Killer men, ISIS, around Sambisa Forest, around the communities of Zamfara, about, around those locations where they are now mining gold. That way, the Tinubu government, I told you, he's not the one that runs Nigeria. By those conflicts happening around Zamfara, the Tinubu government, they will not have the fortitude, they will not have the balls to ask the Zamfara government, how much? Are you making from the gold every month how much of mining are you doing from the gold how much did you make last year from the resource from the gold how much gold have you sold they cannot ask those questions because the cabal they are smart they are clever they know nigeria is not one in their own saying in kem bun kem in kai bun kai what it means that mine is mine and ours is ours they call the biafran oil the you know the wealth of the nation but the gold from 
from Zamfara, it belongs to the Fulani Caliphate. That is the problem I have with that so called Nigeria. And cowards out there claiming to be presidents, they are scared to ask that question. How come the gold from Zamfara, you are the only one keeping the revenue? How come the gold in Zamfara, you are all multi billionaires in dollars from the sales of the gold? How come we cannot see this, the revenue, the proceeds of those gold in our so called, you know, in the budget of Nigeria? How come there is no proceed? But every day people are mining. We know the game you are playing. I can tell you, you are responsible for all the kidnapping. You are responsible for Boko Haram. You are responsible for ISWAP. You are responsible for Hamas in Nigeria. You are doing all this to stop us from accounting, from auditing you on how much you are making in terms of your sales of gold. This is the problem they don't want to ask anybody. They are cowards. Your politicians are all cowards. Your politicians from the west and the south, on the southeast, whatever you want to call them, they are cowards. Your president is a coward. He pretended like he was sick. Hand they shake, like he planned with those kegites or those uh, the the court people of uh, this man, Wale Shoshoyinka, what his name is. He planned with Wale Shoyinka to speak to his court men to come up with a song and mock him as if he's sick that was a cowardly act i shall be men now i shall be men when did that caught them tell me now now money we make oh. they made money to fool the caliphate for the first time tinubu is the only one that was able to fool the fulani cabal but they have found out he knew that the cabal they had a candidate for the APC ticket. They wanted to give it to a Fulani man. So Tinubu had to pretend like he was sick. Hand they shake, leg they shake. Baba went nowhere. Let they say me look on. Hey me look on. Hey me look on. Baba went nowhere. Let they say me look on. Hand they shake, leg they shake. Baba went nowhere. Let they say me look on. That was just a ploy. That was a gimmick. Tinubu is as healthy as a bouncing baby boy. But he had to do that. And Wale Shoyinka had to play the game. They came with that story. They gave it to the media. People like Showare put it out. Hey, oh yeah, Sahara News, breaking news. They've insulted uh, Tinubu. He's sick. His hand is shaking. His leg is shaking. That was a game. Jagaba knew what he was doing. He was doing that to entice Buhari. Because you see, Buhari, <laughs> you guys don't know what's happening. That Buhari you are seeing, that man is deadly. Nigeria is already gone. Nigeria belongs to the caliphate. Nigeria will become an Islamic country. They had the blueprint say, you politicians cannot stop them. But Tinubu had to pretend like he was sick. So the plan B was to say, okay, since this man is sick, maximum he will be in power is six months because he's shaking already. He's got, you know, you know, he, he, he forgets things. Balablu, bulaba, bulaba, balablu. You know, these are techniques. Psychology. He was playing to their mind. He was playing to the gallery. He was looking weak. He was pretending to be weak. Even when he went to greet an oba, they poured what they poured water on his agbada to pretend like he has wet his pants. That was a lie. They poured water on his agbada to pretend that Tinubu was sick. And you all fell for it. Even me, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at this guy. What's going on here? That was when the caliphate now said, okay, this guy is sick. Oh, yeah. Make him president within six months. He will not last six months in power. That was the only option to make it. You see, see how people have to go, how somebody has to stoop low to get a position in Nigeria. 
I don't blame him because he wanted to be. That was the only way he could go. Chief MK Abiola did it the right way. As a man with his bold chest, he came with a bold front. And look at what they did to MK Abiola. When he came and fought for his part, you know, for, for what he won, his election, they dealt with him. But in Tinubu, he now had to come like he was sick. You know the stuff. Walesha Yinka had a hand in it. Hand they shake, leg they shake. It was all a ploy. Showare, well done, man. I see you. I see you. Nice, nice game, you know. I never saw it coming. I saw what you did. I never saw it coming, though. Clever. That was clever. But now the caliphate, they are angry with him because now they knew he tricked them. How come this man who was acting sick, suddenly now he's so healthy, he's talking very eloquently, we can hear what he's saying when he's moving, he's bouncing like, he, uh -uh. wow, really? Okay, we'll deal with him. What we'll do to him now is in Sokoto, in Kadunao, they'll be kidnapping every week, every month. He has to pay. The government has to pay. That's the game. So my people, why I'm telling you this is, is this. Those who still believe in Nigeria, make una wash una hand. The Biafrans that still believe in Nigeria, make una wash una hands off. Because right now, your media, they are not free. As we speak, your media, they are not free. They are reporting from a far distance. I will show you one video next and blow your mind, but let's let just hear this guy off. Well, you know, Rufai, there is this uh, local saying that um, the witch inside the house is the one that usually invites the one outside to say, come, there is food in this place, or Yamona, come. And why am I saying this? Some people in power way back had been accused of having been the people behind all the Boko Haram, all the these... And they were the ones who invited these foreign elements into the country. And now, whether it is within their powers or outside their powers, these elements are really working, especially in the north, when they are causing a lot of uh, wahala, also to hide some form of illegal mining and so on going on in those parts of the country. So it's a cocktail of troubles, and that's why we need to be careful. The Europeans have a saying. It's a big uleu pani to deal with pani. Exactly. If a death in the house does not kill you. An external death cannot kill you. Mm -hmm. So there's a large level of complicity across board in every area. And when we know that, then we should be mindful. Yeah. But you see, as a country, we are not always mindful. We're not always introspecting. And we're not always thinking about the long-term effects of those things. Mm. Another Hold on there, my brother. Hold on there. Hold, hold on there. <laughs> you have spoken well. Towards the end, they exposed what they know but cannot say out there in the media. But right now, let me show you what the media they are doing. Listen. Let me show you the nonsense your Zoom media in Nigeria they are doing now. Instead of them to tell the Western media, say, oh, please, oh, we cannot go to Okwama. We have not been allowed to give to gain access to Okwama. We cannot even get into the community. Your zoo got a dirty media now. They are reporting about Okwama from Lagos. Where is this done in the world? Normally, if there is a crisis, you go to the main place where it is happening and you report it. But your Zoom media, because they want to make some money from the Western media, you, I will expose this lady now. There is a lady here that will speak. I will expose her. She is giving a report from Lagos. Something that happened in Delta State, Oklahoma. She is in Lagos. <laughs> God have mercy. Hey, this uh, hey. Well, they are fighting for their daily bread. How will I blame them? Dollars has gone up. Naira has gone down. They are fighting for their daily bread. But this video you are about to watch will expose the zoom media all the person should have said please oh they've not given me access to the crime scene oh she didn't say that she was reporting from lagos because she knows 
those in the western media they will not even know what is happening when they are paying you for a service to do a freelance and report a media they are expecting you to be on the at the crime scene or be around that community and break the news to the world but watch what you will see here i will expose it at the end if you are with me let us go there listen 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 Nigerians are accusing the military of ransacking and burning their homes in the nation's oil-producing state of Delta. This development comes days after 16 soldiers who went to resolve a land dispute in Delta were killed. Nigeria's military chief has denied any involvement in the incident. Delta residents claim that soldiers attacked the riverside Akuma community of a few hundred people on Sunday. However, Nigeria's defense headquarters say that troops from the 181 amphibious battalion were on a peace a mission to the community when army men were surrounded and killed by youngsters. The chief of the defense staff has uh, ordered a thorough investigation into the incident. Nigeria's Delta sits on a large deposit of crude oil with the presence of many oil wells. This has led to environmental pollution and increasing unrest by youngsters and community members who fight for control of oil areas. For the very latest on this, our correspondent Nuzia has sent us this report. Listen in. Hold it there. Now listen to what their news reporter would do now. She wants to send the report of what is happening in Okwama. She will be reporting all the way from Lagos. How far is the distance from Lagos to Delta State? How far is the distance from Ikeja to Okwama? This is the 419 of the media. Listen. <laughs> condemnation have trailed the premeditated killing of 16 military men when troops responded to a distress call after the communal crisis between the Okoma and Okoloba communities, both in Delta State, uh, South South Nigeria. It is reported that there has been a retaliatory attack by an Nigerian army who are currently conducting a widespread manhunt to capture the perpetrators of the act. Oh, they did. Now see the way she's saying or reiterating the things that the, the, the military they've said. You see the way she's spilling out exactly what the military said in the media. This is why I'm saying we the beer friends, we need our media to be expelling or exposing things like this. Because what she is saying now, she's spilling out exactly the same gospel according to the Nigerian soldiers in Okoma. And now she's this location you would think oh she's at the crime scene no 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 no. this is lagos she's based in lagos doing this stuff she is not in okwama so she she doesn't have any first-hand knowledge what she has is a second-hand knowledge she should have said this from the beginning say please oh the military they have refused access to that community hence i'm reporting from lagos state you know nigeria and all this but she didn't say that she is doing 419 now to the <laughs> to the Western media from India or so. They will now assume that she's at the crime scene. But it's towards the end, you will now say what she will say. Listen. Listen. Said that the army had recovered bodies of colleagues. Some were found beheaded and bodies mutilated. The president has given full authority to the defense chief to bring the perpetrators to justice. Boom! The president has given a full authority to the security chiefs. To bring all perpetrators to justice. Tinubu, you have been indicted here. She just said the president has given full authority to the service chiefs to bring all the perpetrators to order. You see them? Bring them down. Go. Go and get them. It means Tinubu gave that instruction. The same way Obasanjo gave the instructions of what they did in Uudi during that time. I think 1995 or 1999. 1999. The same thing is happening now. She just said it was the president that gave the security chief that authority. Let's continue. Listen, no, it never finish. 
as fear envelops the community over its possible outcome. From Lagos, Nigeria, Louisa Olani, we on. Hold on there, from Lagos, Nigeria. From Lagos, Nigeria. You see, I'm, this is the 419 they do in most cases. You you just gave the Western media a second-hand information that is not true, that is flawed. You gave them a second-hand... Oh, my ah, God, have mercy. I keep saying that the media, they work hand-in-hand. Hand. The Zugota media, they work hand-in-hand hand with the Zoo government and the caliphate. With what she has done now, the Western media don't think, oh, okay, everything is fine. No, they are following the due process. It was the president that told them to go in there. They went in there as peacemakers. When they went in there, some of their men were, you know, brought down. So they are there to make peace and catch the perpetrators. That is what this lady has just done. Because you are not one, you are not one nation. You claim you are one country, one Nigeria, one Nigeria. You are not one nation. That is why, with un, unfortunately, a Yoruba girl will go and talk something like this. Will she say the same thing if this was happening in her land, in her state? Will she spill out this nonsense, this lie, this cock and bull story if this was happening in her village? That's the problem. The cabal, they are very, very smart. That your so-called one Nigeria is a contraption. You cannot escape it. It's like having a crab in a barrel. Having crabs in a barrel. When they attack the Biafrans, they give the power to the Yoruba media to talk and broadcast to the whole world. They don't care because to them, they don't have any invested interest. It is not their people. They don't belong to the same tribe, even though they call them Nigerians. But they know Nigeria means nothing. They love their yoruba -ness before the so-called Nigerianness. Because you're a Biafran, they don't give a damn. They will sleep well at night. This lady, she don't give a damn. She has made her dollars. She was reporting from Lagos. But the crime scene was in Oklahoma. She should have told them, we are the media. We have no access to what is happening. But according to the military, they are the only ones with the access. This is what they are saying. But we, the media, we have no access to Oklahoma. She never mentioned it. So when Nam the Kano was attacking the media, the media, the zoo media, the zoo media, now you understand the pain where it was coming from. He saw this coming. He was a prophet of our time. He saw this before it happened. That's the problem. Caliphate, we no go to school. You say the fool and the caliphate, they didn't go to school. They drain the urine of cow. They shower with the urine of cow. They suck the breast of the cow. But they are using you guys like idiots. They are controlling you so-called southerners and easterners like animals. Huh? God have mercy. This is why it is hard to win the battle. Now to CNN, they will take news from this. Was, oh, everything is fine in Nigeria. No, 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 it's fine. Some stupid guys, they killed some military. So the military, they are there to make peace. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, you know, ah, they are very, very good. You know, in fact, it was even the president that told them. They won't know it is the cabal that have vested interest in those oil. They are the ones that send their full and soldier military to that place. They won't know that when the Igbo and Yoruba soldiers are buying in the north by Boko Haram, by Iswap, by ISIS, by the Fulani killer headsmen, when the communities, when they told the Igbos and the Yoruba soldier to come and eat some two kafa, to come and drink some water, to come and drink some milk and whatever, as they are drinking, as they are eating from behind, the headsmen will come and buy them. They will not go and burn the communities of the saboteurs that worked hand in hand with the Fulani cabal, that 
worked hand in hand with Boko Haram, that worked hand in hand with ISIS, with Iswap, to kill the Igbo soldiers and the Yoruba soldiers. The communities will be spared. Nobody goes to burn down the communities. Nobody goes to attack the chiefs, the elders in those communities in the north. They don't do that because it was the Christian soldiers that are being fired in the north. It is okay to kill them. It doesn't matter. But whenever a Fulani soldier who comes to the east because of oil, they love the oil in Niger Delta. When they come to the east to steal the oil of the east and the men, they fight back. They come with their guns. These guys come back with their guns. They shoot. They shoot. A gun for a gun. Gun battle. They overpowered you. 16 of your men fell down. Next thing, you will come with some more men and go and burn down the houses. Next thing, you will stop the media, the zoo dirty gutter media, from entering the place to see firsthand. Even the governor, you had the power to stop the governor from going into a community in his states. Hey! God have mercy. Only in Nigeria will elephants fly. From me, from here, for now, I'm going to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I remain yours truly, Biafra Superstars Media. God bless you. For those who have ears, let them hear. For those who have ears, let them hear. I have told you a million times, even though I told you twice. For those who have ears, let them hear. Goodbye. Yeah, check me out. Superstars Media. Oh, uh. Lord Logan. Blimey turn Lord Logan. Hand is why floor a show. Now the 14 amalgamation is what we dying for. Three nations to one nation. Ever since annihilation, nepotism is nonsense. You and you clap your hand, clap your hands. Be Afra gonna come, clap your hand, clap your hands. Uh, be Afra, Odu Dua, we're free now. Freedom is gonna come, we're free now. Yeah. people my people my BFM people know how on a day I say good morning good afternoon good evening good night depending from where you're listening to the sound of my voice this is the Biafra superstars media and I'm holding it down I say may God bless Biafra and may God bless his excellency Oyendo Mazanam the Kano may God bless may God bless may God bless his excellency the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic of Minton Exile his excellency E S N Ekba Simon Njoku for the job Simon is doing. Simon, I want to say we thank you, we appreciate you, we love you because we know in your hands Biafra is coming, in your hands Biafra is safe, and in your hands when Biafra comes, the people of Biafra will rejoice. My fellow Biafrans, today it's a very sad one, but again I am sad to say that I told you so. All what we have said has come to pass. We know the zoo very well. We know their language. We know their modus operandi. We know how they roll. In a video I did about the legal team of Mazenam the Kano, I said, give, belong, give what belongs to Caesar to Caesar and to God to God. Give what belongs to the Nigerian zoo to the Nigerian zoo. And to Biafra, to Biafra. 
my fellow beer friends it is sad to say that our lego team they have done the best possible that they could they somehow believed that justice and the rule of law will reign supreme they assumed the rule of law will be allowed to reign supreme in a banana republic it beats my imagination if it was like that then during the time of slavery people wouldn't have died there would have been no law put in place to abolish slavery those who were responsible for slavery could have just repented from their sins and freed all their slaves but no that wasn't the case what happened was people had to come out to fight heads on with the government with the systems with the slave owners slaves were freed and at the end laws were enacted around the whole world from america to britain and the rest of them to free slaves the emancipation of slavery why i'm saying that is this because if you assume that nigeria is an a normal country if you assume nigeria can be named as a similar country to for example to south africa to cameroon to senegal and the rest of them then you are making a mistake nigeria is a peculiar country as our prime minister will say where elephants can fly i took those words from our prime minister i love the way he says it the zoo is a place where elephants can fly it is peculiar it is a unique country a criminally intended created country a country where criminality strive a country where nepotism tribalism and retapism is the order of the day a country where because you are from a particular tribe they will not appreciate you they will not support you they will not even appreciate the job you are doing because you are from a particular tribe a country where when you are doing well successfully the government and a people will come together they will collude to make laws and sometimes use the, the police or the armed forces to destroy your business to make sure you lose because they hate the face they hate the tribe of those doing those kind of businesses to excel a country that does not believe in what they call comparative advantage and competitive advantage as you all know when it comes to business and trade the the beer france we are number one run in fact run the whole world apart from china that are competing but in china the only reason why they are excelling more than us is that they have their own country they make policies to support their businesses they make policies in terms of international trade and the terms of trade so they are excelling more than us because we the beer france we are operating from a contraption known as nigeria that have decided to slow us down that have made sure they want to destroy our businesses when you buy business is the next thing you see the business plaza is burning when you are doing input and exports the next thing you see because your name on the container belongs to a biafra man the dumorages the cost fees and the custom charges is multiplied by 10. you are in a country where people were discussing on the phone and they said they will come with a ploy a plan to stop the biafrans from selling a particular type of product in that zoo called nigeria because you are not a nation it means elephant can fly and that's the only reason why we the beer friends we are second only to china my fellow beer friends i'm saying all this to tell you this that our legal team they have tried their best but unfortunately their best may not be good enough 
in that zoo republic because in most cases the foundation must be the rule of law if you are going into a case if you are going to the court to defend a client if the foundation if the premise is not guided by the rule of law then you are wasting your time it's as best as not going to represent that person i said for the fact namdekano was kidnapped from kenya and brought to nigeria what even gave our legal counsel the temerity the audacity to assume that they will get a fair hearing because if there is something called the rule of law for the fact he was kidnapped from kenya and brought to nigeria in an extraordinary rendition then there should be no basis for unnam the Kano to be tried in the nigerian courts so today my people i'm going to team this one to the enam the Kano's legal team worry no more you've done your best possible in the zoo republic to the enam the Kano's legal team biafra is saying worry no more you've done your best possible in the zoo republic my fellow biafrans as we speak today i am going to show you what the legal team is saying the man they chose to hold the man they chose to kidnap and nam the canoe all because he was speaking for the liberation of his people with his mouth with his tongue they went all the way to kenya to kidnap him today you will see what Iswab, Boko Haram, the Fulani killer headsmen are doing in Nigeria during the time of their, you know, breaking their fasts. The Muslims celebration, the Eid Fifitri, or what they call it. You will see the Muslims, the Fulani headsmen, Boko Haram, Iswab, and the rest of them. They are also observing their own. And no policeman is there to catch them. No policeman is there to catch them. No army, no DSS is there to catch them. They are in a big field in Zamfara State. Doing their prayers. Breaking their fast. And celebrating the ideal fetry. It beats my imagination. That can only happen in a zoo republic where elephants can fly so if you are with me let us listen to the key words or statements made by enam the canos legal team two or three of them and afterwards i will show you what the other people are doing the kidnappers the boko haram the iswap and the rest of them i will show you how they are having a feel time a feel good time they are in the spirit praying to their god without the dss the army the police coming close to arrest them they are in an open field praying with their ak-47 by their side and nobody is there to drop a bomb or to arrest them that shows you the kind of country you are in if you are with me let us go there listen he never be, he never obeyed court order others and we not take it from him that because of his mentality because of his military background now that we have a democrat i'm talking about uh, president uh, bola ahmed Tinibu, who is a democrat i work with him as a student during nadeko okay when my uncle Professor was Edward Oproji was there. And we worked together. So we felt that as a democrat he is, he's supposed to reveal all the atrocities that is being committed by uh, 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 President Mohammed uh, Mohammed Buhar. Then now instead of him going by his renewed hope agenda to reveal all this, okay. I said no, 
when you are calling an organization that is not a terrorist organization a terrorist organization in your country okay. you are destroying the country and that was the one of the worst um, 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 uh, acts and the decisions um, uh, taken by Buari and the uh, Attorney General of the Federation Malami the worst SAN I have ever seen in the, in, in the whole world now that you don't declare somebody uh, an organization in your own country a terrorist organization you are now implicitly telling people that you are you are you, you are a terrorist country and the people should not come to invest hold Nobody it there first hold it there first you just made a very good point my barrister you said when you were a student you worked with tinubu during the nadeko time Unfortunately, I'm here to say this, that as sad as it may sound, looking at the way Tinubu is operating now, I can confidently say the great Chief MKO Abiola died in vain. He died in vain because if he had known the kind of criminals he was dealing with, if he had known the chameleons around him in Nadeko telling him to fight the military junta, he never knew they had their own selfish interest. They left him there to die. They left him to dry out while the rest of them, they are the ones now gaining. If Tinubu was a so-called member of Nadeko, those who were fighting for what? democracy and the rule of law suddenly in the time of tinubu is when this is happening in that zoo republic the highest level of tribalism i have seen in my life is happening in the time of tinubu that tells me chief m Abiola died in vain because if he had known he was dealing with criminals all around him he would have washed his hands off he would have known that fight wasn't a good fight because what is the purpose right now you have somebody who was the one of the so-called pioneers of nadeko as your president in that zoo is he standing on the shoulders of chief mk abiola no because look at what he's doing in power With all due respect, I love my brother, Chief Sunday Igboho. With all due respect, I respect Showare. But can you all see the game this man is playing? The highest level of tribalism. Which shows that we are not one people. It shows we are not one nation. Because he came into power and suddenly he has released his own people from power. But Namdekano is still being held. This man has just said that he worked with Tinubu during the time of Nadeko. I hope your eyes is now clear, Mr. Barrister. I hope you will not know the person you are dealing with. Because they are all there for their selfish interests. You guys should know that. Do not assume that everybody fighting with you is your friend. Most of them, they are there for selfish interest. They are there for selfish interest for declaring an organization a uh, uh, um, uh, terror, uh, terrorist organization have been provided you did not declare um, um, uh, 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 um, yeti Allah, uh, uh, Hesman, you do not declare them terrorists see you now an um, IPOB that you know that never carried arms IPOB that know that they are following everything procedural you now declared so it is not late we are people have been uh, uh, asking what is the president doing mr uh, president uh, of course uh, i never believed in your administration based on your antecedent in lagos as a governor that's why i work against you i voted against you if opportunity for that it is of i will still work against you but now it is you still have an opportunity to amend your your ways look at all those decisions President Buari took in respect of this uh, Nandekalos matter and IBUB matter. Look at a way you can apply political solution. 
Of course, if all those things that gave rise to this particular agitation is being addressed, I don't think that there will be need for agitation. But My brother, hold on there. You see, this thing you are saying, I, I get you. I get your point. But I need you to understand that Stilubu is not the one in power. I'll be a liar to you if I tell you that Tintinubu has the power to release Mazen Namdekano. Because he's not the one at the helm of affairs. Those who are the rulers of Nigeria were the ones that sent the military to Okwama. And just yesterday now, the, mil the military in Okwama, they are having their own hearing. They want to call the two communities to come and sit down and discuss what happened the military not the governor not an independent party not an independent institution coming to investigate to know what happened in okwama people from okwama they are still in the bush and the military they are saying they want to call a round table to discuss yesterday it was only the other villagers that had people there nobody from okoma came because there is no need discussing with those who are doing the killing and who want to be the ones to carry out you know their so-called legislation or whatever over the case this is the problem we have in that zoo so if you assume that stinobu is the one holding and i'm the canoe then you might be making a very big mistake because Tinubu is not the one ruling Nigeria. I can beat my chest and tell you that. It is the Fulani Cabal. Because I don't see why he's taking the fight of Buhari. If it was him that was holding Namdekano, he would have washed his hands. Since. Because Justice Bintanyaku is doing exactly the same thing she did when Buhari was there. You said it here. You called for what? A bail. And she said no. Despite the Supreme Court has said that on, they were wrong in cancelling the bail of Anam the Kano. The High Court was wrong in revoking the bail of Anam the Kano because Anam the Kano ran away for his life. They came to kill him. In the process, 28 people died in his house. He even lost his father and mother. You know? So the Supreme Court scolded the High Court for revoking his bail. But despite that, you and I know that just, Justice or whatever her name is, Binta Yaku, she refused to even hear what the Supreme Court said. She said she would not give him bail because even the Kuje prison, she said it was not safe to keep Namdekano there. Think about that. That tells you she is working with a script that was prepared for her. Very, very sad. They are telling Mr. President, you have seen how a, somebody that was um, arrested, I'm talking about was the name uh, Wadume, was arrested and he was released. We are talking about to uh, name them, Kabiru Soko, them, them, a lot of them, that were released not to talk about somebody that is fighting for the right of his people simply because you feel that he's an evil and you think, you think that you can intimidate him no now you are talking because they know he's a is a biafran man that's it our own sins is unforgivable in that zoo called nigeria which is why i keep wondering why do they still want us there when they know they don't they cannot even stand us anything we do they get angry Sheikh Gumi can say what he wants to say. It is okay. Nobody would disturb him. The Imam can swear and say he will buy the wife of the president. It's okay. Nobody will disturb him, not even the DSS. But the Igwe in Lagos said, please be kind to our business people. They are destroying their properties. They are burning down their business. To the Lagos State Governor, if you cannot protect us and our businesses, perhaps we may have to call the ESN to protect our businesses.
just that statement that man is still languishing in detention this is now the 11th month i am counting on the atrocity they are doing to that man that somebody a a biafra man made a statement just a just for you to utter that word out they get so angry suddenly there is law functioning in nigeria this is the 11th month the igwe of lagos is still languishing in dss dungeon but everybody else can say what they want to say. As even Asari Dokubo has immunity, he can brandish an AK-47, a machine gun, live on TV. And nothing happens to him. To the legal team, again I'm saying, worry no more. You've done your best possible in the Zoo Republic for Nnamdekano. I do not see you guys being able to release or free and I'm the kind of because you are trying to go against a machine being backed by Britain, being controlled by the Fulani Caliphate. And they don't want to use anything to hear freedom of the Biafrans. So to them, what Enam Nekano is doing is 10 times worse more than what Boko Haram, Iswap, ISIS, Fulani Killer Hetzman are doing. In fact, the Fulani Killer Hetzman, they say don't call them terrorists, call them bandits. Just call them bandits. They warned the Zoom media to call them bandits. And they've been doing that. Very, very sad. Listen. It's anybody. Because after it is, after four years or eight years, as as the case may be, you will leave. Another person will come to try and do something so that we have you write your name in the Guinness Book of, Guinness Book of uh, Record. But of the story is that at the next adjourned date on 17th April, the cat cannot before cannot come before the horse. Okay. The horse must come before the cat. Okay. And what is the horse? Fair hearing. And the cat is the accelerated hearing. It cannot have any criminal trial without fair hearing. That is the point we are trying to make. And this message is being sent loud and clear to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to the Nigerian judiciary. Thank you very much for coming and you have a nice day. Listen, listen, listen. Okay. That as we speak to you now, we have not been able to have a conference with our, with our client. That one is one. As a lawyer, my rules uh, instructed me that for me to enter into a matter, I must have adequate conference with my client in line with the charges. And my client, while having that conference with him, I will make sure that my client is mentally stable and calm for him to tell me the area to go and for me to advise him accordingly okay that never they will never have that, that opportunity the reason is being that the prosecutor the dsss one is frustrating our effort to that effect so that they can um, uh, prove their matter without being challenged and then uh, the will be convicted and we are saying that if and the color that opportunity was not given in the color how the opportunity be given to him send him to kuja correctional center okay we have our reasons you have the reasons to keep him in a um, dss yes, in a dss yes. the reason that only you know but we have our reasons where you the court has even confirmed that what you are saying is true we're going by the case of dss and actual opera and we are now telling you that we uh, we cannot either you transfer him to kuja correctional center or you release him on bail that then you reinstated his bell as directed by, by the Supreme Court, or you send him to a, pri uh, a private house for house arrest. And I gave instances, I said government house, you must say government house, then you said government house, any place that is, you are decent, or liaison offices, or alternatively, because the judge can do anything under Section 6. You can uh, re uh, remind him in, his, in your house. <laughs>
what we are what we are, what we need is a place that will be free he will look around he will not be uh, afraid of saying anything he will be free to give us whatever thing because where you said a and you said is it true that you do this one he said yes you said okay we are not going to defend you on this one you can plead guilty on this i don't know whether you're getting what i'm saying if so we'll be able to advise him that we have not done and i'm telling you that if by the next adjoint date our applications are in and they, 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 they work with the prosecution and refuse that application. I said, I, I don't know of others, okay. cannot go into that trial because it is against the rules of my professional ethics. Because if anything happened, I'll be held liable. Okay. Because you are not pre prepared for trial and you put your... What was the last... Because you are not pre prepared for trial and you put your... Uh, grant on a trial and i gave you instances you are a driver i will speak uh, briefly on the issue listen now to this man he made some good points i love the way he broke it down listen to this man it's a long story but he made some good points let's go listen of the rendition of mazen Kano from kenya to nigeria We are all aware that uh, Mazen Namdekano, after the attack on him by the military of the Nigerian government, had to flee Nigeria for his life to Kenya. Unfortunately, in that attack in his hometown at Afaruku, so many people were murdered by the Nigerian military. Not less than 28 persons died on that particular day in the hands of the Nigerian military and these are young men and women who had no arms on them who were in a private compound of the late chief of Afaruku after the attack on uh, the property killing people the occupants, including Mazen Namdekano, his parents, that's the traditional ruler of Fafariuku and the wife, had to flee, amongst other persons that managed to escape. But like we are saying, 28 persons died on that particular day. After that day, so many other people died, including the parents of Mazen Namdekano. And this is as a result of the injuries, the shock that was inflicted on them by the Nigerian military that attacked the compound of Mazen and the Kano. And the Supreme Court in its judgment of 15 December 2023 has confirmed this position that Mazen and the Kano's escape was not an escape from justice but rather was a natural action taken by a human being who is aware that his life is imminently in danger. Hold it there. You just heard it that the escape, and then the kind of escaped, was because his life was imminently in danger. Because Buhari, that criminal, that man wearing mask, that old dirty idiot that I cannot wait to lay my hands on him. Anywhere I find that man, I swear to God and man, that mask when they wear will be ripped up his face. Because what that man did shows his true na nature. He shows how evil, how wicked that man is. Because of that same man, the great Chuba Okadigbo died. A man who had asthma went on a rally with Buhari. And he was, I believe it was a tear gas. Tear gas were sprayed and Okadigbo died in the process. Despite the death of Chuba Okadigbo, this is how Buhari is paying the people, the children, the siblings, the relatives, the tribe of Chubal Kadibu.
he came with the iron fist he sent his full killer headsmen now you know that those the so-called military that went to the home of enam the kanu they were full killer headsmen they went to the home of enam the kanu do you want to know how i know let me show you something that will blow your mind listen my people what you are seeing here my people what you are seeing here are terrorists that were so confident to release a video of themselves celebrating the Eid Alfred, whatever they call it, in Zamfara community. As I speak to you, this is a video that happened today. You see them with their AK 47, you see them with their bikes. They are in the land of Zamfara. This is not Okwama community. This is a community in Zamfara. The Boko Haram, the Iswab, Fulani Kela Headsmen, ISIS, they are here praying to their Allah because they are into fasting and they are about to break their fast. They are praying. And by their side are their AK-47 and their machine bikes. Respect to Sahara reporters for bringing this one out. Look at them. They all had their guns there. Where is the military? Where is the DSS? Where is your police? Where is your so-called tactical unit that went to Okwama? Why is this community still free? Why are the people living in this community not sent to the bush? Why have they not killed the people living here? Why have they not burnt the houses in this community in Zamfara? When I tell you about different strokes for different folks, sometimes you people don't get it. You don't know where I'm coming from. I have read Nigeria from front page to the back of the page. I have seen Nigeria in total. And I said Nigeria is a banana republic. Nigeria is worse than a zoo. Our leader was being kind when he nicknamed Nigeria a zoo republic. Nigeria is a country where elephants can fly. Look at Boko Haram. Look at Fulanekela Headsmen. Look at Iswab relaxing, doing their Juma or whatever they want to call it, doing their prayer. They are also celebrating their Eid El Fetri festival. This is Zamfara State, my people. All these men, they are free. Don't tell me this is a tiny place that the police cannot know where this place is. Do not tell me this is a remote environment that your zoo army cannot get to. But they could get to Okwama, a place where they needed gun boats to go through what? Rivers. When it comes to the land of Biafra, the military can get there. When it comes to oil, the cabal can send their military to go there and do havoc cause mayhem pillage the land burn the houses by the people living in that place but to the whole world to america you said you are looking for boko haram you said you are after isis i present to you a crowd of isis boko haram iswab and fulani killer headsmen just a bomb thrown down here could have decimated all these guys and would have created peace in that community. But no. Because what is happening in Nigeria is a deliberate attempt. Sheikh Gumi called these people their freedom fighters. Don't forget about it. Sheikh Gumi said these are their freedom fighters. They love the Fulani Kela headsmen. They love Boko Haram because they are their freedom fighters. 
freedom fighters fighting for what freedom last time i checked in that zoo republic the fulani caliphate they've been ruling for at least 90 percent of the time you've had somebody in this so-called seat of power freedom fighters what are they fighting from to the whole world i'm telling you do not be deceived nigeria is a crime scene britain is responsible for this and their mission is to islamize nigeria yes he is right sheikh gumi is right when he called them their freedom fighters because these are the men fighting to islamize nigeria for the records the foreign secret the foreign secretary of britain lord david cameron has already pronounced that he has had a discussion with all the islamic countries of the world and he mentioned nigeria as one of the dignitaries so what these foot soldiers are doing is to carry out the declaration nigeria has been declared to be an islamic country and the foot soldiers are here to do the job they are here to make sure the quran gets to the red sea from the river niger as they promised their heavenly you know guardian the man they call usman danfodio lord have mercy so for those out there the naysayers who are confused those who say they love nigeria those who say they believe in nigeria rofa you're saying my guy i'm calling out on you rofa you're saying you say you love nigeria rofa you're saying tell me what you know about this because this is the trajectory your zoo country that you love is going rofa you're saying you say god bless nigeria god bless your military but where is your military? Where full and killer headsmen? They are observing their Juma. Rafa, you said you are, you have to wake up from your slumber and and smell that coffee. That coffee has been brewing for too long. It is time to smell the coffee. Because I swear to God and man, the Nigeria you say you love today you will see no more the nigeria you see today you shall see no more and the nigeria you know today you will know no more these are the food soldiers of the fulani cabal and they are here doing the prayer not even the dss not the sss not your military not your mopole your mobile police not even police officers are here they are so confident making a video showing you what they are doing to tell you they are free it is only in nigeria that elephants can fly lord have mercy but they hold on the canoe they hold on and the canoe. Somebody who is speaking with the mouth saying his people must be free. He told us they were coming, they are coming, they are coming. Full and Nikola has been, they are coming. Boko Haram, they are coming. Iswap, they are coming. ISIS, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming. They have come. Look at them now doing their prayer. They are Juma. They are celebrating their eighth. They are back at it. They are Barika de Salah or what you want to call it. I don't know but they are here they have come and they are so confident doing their prayer this happened today my people what you are seeing in this video happened today they are so confident nobody is chasing them do not be deceived do not be fooled this is the trajectory nigeria is going nigeria is gone to the Yorubas who believe in Tinu because he's your brother. To the Yorubas, open your eyes. We are speaking to you as a good neighbor. Open your eyes for once. 
This madness has to stop. Open your eyes for once. And see where that zoo country will lead you and your people. Last time I checked, Ilori has been taken from you. Ilori is now a northern state. No more a Yoruba state. Your Ilori is gone. Even Kogi used to be a Yoruba state. I keep saying it. When I was young, my Yoruba friend, Ese Okene, that's his name. He was very fluent in Yoruba. He is a Yoruba boy. Ese Okene. He is from Kogi state. But now, your Kogi state is gone. Your Kogi state is gone. Ah, God, my God, have mercy. I don't know what else to call this thing. I don't know what else to call it. Why can't you guys see what is happening in Nigeria? Why is the whole world keeping silent? Why is the whole world keeping silent? This is what is happening in that zoo. So my question is, why is the whole world keeping mute that they are holding a Christian, a Biafran, a Jew man in Biafran land? Our leader is being kidnapped from Kenya to Nigeria and the world, they keep quiet. They went to Kenya to kidnap our leader, Namde Kanu, and the world, the world, the world, the UN, they kept quiet. But they tell me they believe in the rule of law. America, you are keeping quiet. But those who attacked Russia, ISIS, they are here in Nigeria. The other time, the head of ISIS came to Nigeria. The other time, the head of these Islamic countries, they came to Nigeria. Hamas, the leader came to Nigeria. You say you love Jew the Jews, but look at what is happening here. The killers of the Jews, they are there in Nigeria. To the whole world. It is time you turn around, turn a new leaf. Because Biafra is the only nation in Africa. You need a strategic partnership with the Biafrans. Because we are the only nation in West Africa that can support you in curbing the nonsense that is happening in West Africa. If you don't do it, if you keep on playing with fire because of oil, you have allowed oil to be your God. The, the love of the resources of the Biafrans, you have made that to clog your eyes. You cannot see what is happening here. These are Boko Haram. These are members of ISIS. These are the Iswab, the full and killer headsmen, carrying guns, AK-47, doing the pillaging in the land of Biafra in the Northwest, everywhere they are responsible. And you keep mute. Very soon, these guys will turn around. When they Islamize Nigeria, they will turn around and come to Europe. It is time for you guys to act. You must support the Prime Minister of the BFR Republic Government in exile. We need more allies. We need your support. It is time to nip this thing in the board. We have the men that are strong enough to fight this enemy. All we need is your support. All we need is your support because in Nigeria, there is no rule of law. It was designed that way by the caliphate. The only tribes that have to an extent the rule of law are the caliphates and sometimes the Yorubas. Because the Yorubas, not all, but they have chosen to lay in the same bed with the caliphate. Very, very sad. I keep saying it, even when they Islamize that zoo called Nigeria, most of the Yorubas, they will show a nonchalant attitude. Because if you ask most of them, you, you see me, I call it speed is speed. If you ask Mayegu now, Mayegu that you all love, I love him too, he's a good guy. But if you ask my Mayegu, how many religion have you gone through? He will tell you the first one was Islam. He tried Islam. He was also into 
Christianity. If you ask my main man, Koiki Media, he will tell you he is down with Islam, he is down with Christianity, and he is down with the Ifa or the traditional spirituality. Same with Chief Sunday Igboho and the rest of them. And because it is part of their culture now, they full and it through them, through Afonja, he has gone deeper into the Yorubas. As we speak, 65% of the Yorubas, they are Muslims. Even more than that, for what I'm seeing, because most of them, they converted to Christianity. But they still respect the tenets of Islam. As we speak, all the hardcore pastors from the Yoruba side, they were once students, Islamic scholars. The man they called Tunde Bakari was a hardcore Islamic scholar. The owner of Redeem Church was a hardcore Islamic scholar. I can go on and on. I can go on and on. My other friend, their house were close to my house in Lagos. His father was a hardcore Muslim. Every Friday, they go for their Jumat prayer. They all wear the kaftan and the small hat. They go for their Jumat prayer every Friday. The father was a hardcore Islamist. But suddenly, in the early 90s, something strange happened when the owner of Redeem Church converted to Islam and opened that church. He had the biggest sponsorship to open that church. Suddenly, this hardcore man who was a Muslim, that my friend, his father, after seeing him, going through the bible to understand the bible and to cram the verses in the bible we now asked our friend how come your father is reading the bible he said oh they've told him oh, um he'll he'll become a pastor soon oh. so he's he's trying to learn the, the bible this is i'm saying i hope that my friend is not watching this broadcast The man kept on cramming the Bible. He was studying the Bible, studying the Bible, studying the Bible. Suddenly, he was made a co-pastor in the redeemed church of, of God or whatever the name is. And now, he's a Christian pastor. This thing I am saying, if I am lying, may I never see Biafra. This gospel I'm giving out about this story just now. If I am telling lies in any way, may my two eyes and my two feet never see or enter Biafra. I am telling you guys this because I know what I'm saying. The reason why you are seeing all these things, all your so-called Pentecostal churches, the designed by the caliphate, you say the caliphate, they are stupid, you say they are not educated, but they have you in the blockers. They have grabbed you all by the balls. As we speak now, they control your so-called Christian faith. I said it. They've taken over. They've taken over, which is why your pastors now, they, they only support the caliphate. Whatever the caliphate say, they support it. But when good luck Jordan was there, you saw how even Adegboboye, all, all of them, they attacked good luck Jonathan. You saw it now. Tunde Bakare, the rest of them, they came out and they attacked him. There was a rally for two weeks. All the pastors came out because they were speaking under one voice. To the whole world. This is why the bear friends are saying we want out. What you are seeing here is not part of our culture. It is strange to us. It is not something we, we can, you know, assimilate to. No, no, no. The religion is strange to us. Islamic way of life is different to we, the bear friends. We, there is a contrast in our religious belief. So it is something strange to us. This is something we cannot tolerate. Their mission is to Islamize Nigeria. But we, the Biafrans, we are the stumbling block. This is why they held our leader, Namdekano, 
with the assumption that once once they hold him the thirst the quest for biafra is dead unknown to them that there was a disciple loved by our leader Enamdekano. a man who told our leader you have cried in the public you have prayed in the public that you needed 100 men i will make it easier for you because in me i am 15 one so all you have to do is go all out to look for the 50 more to join me this same man our leader told us to listen to simon Ekba and share his videos because simon is coming with a new dimension unfortunately those they call the dos they connived with the governors they connived with the politicians and they connived with the members of the fulani caliphate to kidnap our leader mazen amdekano a man on holiday in kenya having a good time enjoying the weather not knowing that those he has entrusted with his safety are the same people that sold him out to the caliphate he was kidnapped in kenya rendition to nigeria and since june 2021 they have never given the chance to a fair hearing so i bring it full circle to the legal team I want to assure you that you have done your best. Stay strong. Keep your head up. Because this fight is not something you guys can handle. To the legal team of Unam Kano, I am saying, worry no more. You have done your best in that Zoo Republic. If they refuse to give Unam Kano bail, in the next appeal court hearing do not worry we the beer friends shall continue to keep the objectives the goal of Mazenam the Kanu alive he told us it was to restore Biafra we now have a prime minister we have a cabinet we now run the Biafra Republic government in exile. To the legal team, keep your head up. You have done a good job. You can count yourself as men. But unfortunately, you must give what belongs to Caesar to Caesar and to God to God. In the same vein, I'm saying, give what belongs to Nigeria to Nigeria and to Biafra, to Biafra. There is no rule of law in Nigeria. So I think it will be extra hard for you guys to gain or get justice for Namdekano. Keep your head up. Keep your chin up. You've done well. Aloy Jimako and the other guys around there in the team, you've done well. Keep your head up. But be rest assured that our Prime Minister and the whole team in the cabinet, we shall not let Anandi Kano down. Biafra must be taken to this new dimension of restoration. This year, in the 2nd of December, we shall declare Biafra let the heaven fall down let the devil come down let even god come no one can stop us from declaring biafra this year and when the biafra is declared you shall see me in biafra i will be there in the flesh to support my people to fight for my people to liberate my people and if God willing to die for my people from me from here for now 
I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I remain yours truly, Biafra, Superstars Media. God bless you. Ike de no de no de Ike 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 Ike Prime Minister Ike Ike de no de no de Ike Ike Biafra Ike Ike de no de no de Ike Ike Pentecost, Ike, Ike Dino Dino Di Ike, Ike Dragon, Ike, Ike Dino Dino Di Ike, Ike Jachundin Zama, Ike, Ike Dino Dino Di Ike, Ike Dino Dino Di Ike, Ike Dino Dino Di Ike. Ike de no de no de Ike Ike de no de no de Ike Ike dragon Ike Ike de no de no de Ike Ike prime minister Ike Ike de no de no de Ike Ike Pentecost Ike Ike de no de no de Ike dragon Dragon, dragon, kai geso. Mone, je, je, mona, na, na. Dragon, o kai geso. My dragon, my dragon, my dragon, kai geso. Mone, je, je, mona, na, na. Dragon, o kai geso. MNK, MNK. Amen, ke kai geso. Mone, je, je, mona, na, na. Amen, ke kai geso. Amen, ke, amen, ke, amen, ke kai geso. Mone, je, je, mona, na, na. Amen, ke kai geso.